Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Third chapter of the book of Revelations. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. And unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Hallelujah. Amen. He that openeth, he knows how to use it too. How many believe he knows how to use that key? Hallelujah. Ooh, yes. He that openeth and no man shut up. Ha ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> he openeth and no man. Shut up, that's all anybody needs is just a fellow that's got the key and knows how to use it to open for him. Amen. Ain't no man got that key. LL don't have that key. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. No man got that key, but he got it. Amen. He may allow us to use it to once in a while at his bidding. Amen. But he's got the keys to the kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> and he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, Everybody's glad the door still open. Say amen. Oh, aren't you glad that he's not shut the door? Amen. Did you see this week that he hasn't shut the door? I mean, the preacher couldn't hardly get in edgewise if people were so ready to pray. Praise God. He's not shut the door yet. Hallelujah. My goodness. Amen. Come out of the camp meeting like that and start complaining about uh, uh, how dead folks are and how uh, uh, needy folks are. Uh, hey, the door's wide open. Just step right in and help thyself. I walked into a Chinese restaurant. I decided I'd have me some Chinese food. First time I'd ever been to one, so I was going to go to Oral Roberts uh, meeting in 1954 down in Memphis, Tennessee. I drove my little 48 Plymouth. I called him Old Blue. Amen. Down to Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. And I finally found me a great big Chinese restaurant uh, somewhere. Amen. In the southeast part of Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. And I walked in the open door. The door was open, Brother Burks. Amen. And I stood there, hillbilly that I was, having never, amen, had gone to a Chinese restaurant or a big restaurant like, man, it was big, it seemed like as big as this sanctuary. And it was just full of tables, and the tables was all set. Well, amen, uh, at, at home when Mama set the table, uh, everybody had their place. And I thought, well, since the tables is already set, they've got it set for somebody else. The only thing about it, there wasn't anybody in there but me. I was the only one. Gary, I'd come at off hours. Uh, I'd walk through the open door, and there I was, a hillbilly standing there gawking around at that great big Chinese restaurant. Uh, amen. With the tables all set with white linen, napkins, and china, and silverware, and nobody eating, Roger. Nobody. Amen. Yeah, I thought they've got it reserved for sure. And a Chinese waitress walked up to me in her broken English that this hillbilly just barely could understand. And she said, any table here just for you. I could take my pick. I had walked through the open door, praise God. And she said, any table. 
table here just for you. Praise God. And you know what I did? I sat me down at one of those tables and even though there was nobody there but me, I ate if I had to eat by myself. I dined if I had to dine by myself. Anyway, somebody said, I don't want to go to heaven by myself. You're starving to death. You'll eat by yourself. you find something to eat, won't you? If you're hungry enough, you will. Amen. Of course we'd rather have company eating. I'd need a whole lot more bologna, Brother Mike, if I've got two or three preachers sitting around the table. And I've put a lot of it away. Incidentally, I've been having bologna sandwiches a lot here lately. Ever since Father's Day, as a matter of fact, we're shame. Amen. And uh, I go down and I cut me off a big chunk of bologna. Got the refrigerator downstairs. And then I cut some half-inch slices. Did you ever eat half-inch bologna? You haven't eaten bologna till you eat. I don't like those little thin slices, you know, you got to have a half dozen on to make a sandwich. Hey, man, I cut half-inch slices. And I've been having some half-inch bologna sandwiches here lately. Hey, man, woo! I like it that way. Hey, man, I'm going to pray if I pray by myself. Somebody said, I ain't going if nobody else goes. I'm going by the help and grace of God if nobody goes. Well, poor so-and-so, they have such a hard time in their home. Nobody in their family goes to church, and that's the reason they can't hardly live for God. Hogwash. I walked right past them for years and years and years and left them standing there. Amen. And went to church anyway. Praise God. Thumbing it down the road with a car sitting in the driveway. Thumbing it to the next revival. Amen. They didn't go and they wouldn't take me. Amen. But I thumbed it, Brother Ray, to the revival. Amen. If I could get one mile down the road to Highway 63, amen, I had a better chance of catching a ride. Sometimes, amen, I'd catch a ride to church, but late at night in the country, Folks quit traveling. And uh, I didn't have a ride back to church. And it was six miles from Midway, amen, to home. Amen. A little better than six miles. And, uh, 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 oh, I'm telling you what. You never realized how long a road was till you've walked six miles in the dead of night. And the cars that's coming by, they just go zoom. And I've walked it in the winter time when uh, those tail lights, Brother Vern, just looked so warm. And I thought, boy, if they just only stop pick me up, I could get warm for a little while. And I was walking through the cold. Hey, Amen. I caught a ride to church, but didn't get, get a ride home. I had to walk all the way. Not very many times. In fact, I can count on the fingers on one hand where I had to walk home and have fingers left over. God always made a way. Amen. But there's a few times He let me walk it. Hallelujah. Why? The door was wide open and I went through it. I walked through it. Amen. Yeah, there's no excuse. You can't blame the preacher. You can't blame the deacon. You can't blame anybody that you're trying to stumble over. Notice I said trying to stumble over. You can't stumble over anybody unless you do it on purpose. If you could use an excuse, it was because you was looking for one. You was looking for an easy out. You was looking for a, an excuse. You know what an excuse is? That's a thin skin of reason stretched over a lie. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes it cracks and and, and you, everybody sees your shame. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't feel like going to church. But I've known folks that stay sick all week long in the bed and get up and go to town on Saturday. There's something about it. It charged them up. It helped their adrenaline or something. Amen. And for one whole day as well. 
went back to bed rest of the week. Amen. Hey, don't you think we ought to be able to revive up enough to walk through an open door? Hallelujah. Amen. When the battle of the Alamo was fought and the cry of the battles for ages on, including Pearl Harbor, amen, was remember the Alamo. Amen. Because men died there. Amen. When uh, that old Indian fighter lay sick uh, and his consumptive lungs had uh, made him so weak, whatever virus he had, Amen. And uh, he couldn't get up. And uh, finally, Travers, he, he invited everybody that wanted to stay and fight. And they knew what it meant if they stayed and fought. Uh, he meant to walk across the line and he had drawn in the sand. Amen. And when men walked one by one, including Daniel Boone, amen, a whole bunch more, amen. And Travers counted them. Finally, old Jim, who was sick, amen, and dying. They said, drag me across that line too. I'm staying. Amen. If you're sick, you'll go if you want to bad enough. If you want to bad enough. I mean, a great door was opened this week uh, for our young folks. Uh, and a whole bunch of our boys and girls walked through it. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise God. What a door of opportunity. One of the greatest, I've told one of them as I invited the altar, it's the greatest opportunity you'll ever have. What a pull. Amen. No peer pressure to stay outside. Amen. Nothing but pressure to get on the inside. Devils chased a mile away. Praise God. Not a one of them around nowhere. Hey, what a time to get saved. And there's a bunch of them did before it's over. Amen. All our group here in church prayed through good before it's over. Praise God. Got the victory. Amen. <laughs> Sister Christina laying on her back, uh, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God uh, gave the utterance. Amen. Christa said, I, I never seen her act like that before in my life. Uh, amen. Uh, Christina never saw herself act that be way before uh, in her life. Neither. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. I tell you, some of them walked through that open door. Amen. God had opened the door of opportunity. Amen. Noah, all the time he's building that ark, all the time he's gathering people into the ark, all the time he's preaching, the door stayed open. Anybody that would give up their own ideas and submit to Noah's gospel could walk through that open door. Amen. Yeah, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached to them. Hey, God don't preach to people, amen, to uh, kick them out. He don't preach to people to shut them out. Preaching is an open door. Amen. And preaching's still going on. Hallelujah. But after everybody got in and God called Noah and his three sons and their wives he went, come on in, son. Come on in, daughters-in-law. Come on in. And everybody got in all of a sudden. Amen. The door being opened until they all got on the inside. It closed. Amen. It closed so hard. Amen. The chips fell off around it. Amen. Ground shook. And Noah went back as people knocked on the door. Amen. Noah went back and tried to open that door. But God had shut it. Amen. He said once, when once the master of the house has risen and shut to the door. One of my first revivals was for Sister Rosa Hatfield 
she told about it in a tape the night uh, we celebrated uh, 20 years here at the highway and 40th anniversary for the church and ourselves amen and uh, she told about me preaching that revival for her and uh, I preached for uh, several nights and nobody got saved much and, and uh, people were sitting back God was moving God was sending conviction nobody getting saved amen one night I dreamed that I saw a door closing I saw a gigantic door closing and I was just a young preacher and I didn't uh, have the knowledge of the Bible maybe that I have now don't have near enough now amen but uh, I heard a voice from out of the night say when once the master of the house hath risen and shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and I thought that must be in the Bible somewhere amen and so I looked and I looked and I got my concordance and finally I found it. Amen. When once the master of the house hath risen and shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and to weep. Amen. And I saw that door closing so clear and I felt the imperativeness of it and the urgency of it. I went back to preach on when once the master of the house has risen and shut to the door amen and before the revival was over we walked down into a frozen creek and broke through edges of ice and I baptized seven people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost amen as grown men came to God amen the door was still open it was still ajar Amen. You could even still get baptized if you want to bad enough in the country with two inches of ice on the creek. You could still get baptized. Amen. The door was still open. Praise God. Hey, if you want to bad enough, you can walk through that door this morning. It's still open. But don't presume on God. Amen. Like some men that I've talked to, I felt led to stop and talk to a man running a state line liquor store right on a state line in Missouri and Arkansas. Uh, the county in Missouri was wet and Fulton County in Arkansas was dry. Amen. I felt led to stop the state line liquor store and talk to that man. And found out he was the son of one of those old gray-haired mothers that shouted and walked the aisle. Sister Gregory, amen, she's the one that she had such a sensitive to the Spirit that night. I disobeyed God and didn't give the interpretation to that message in other tongues. Uh, Sister Gregory walked up to me after service, after tied up that service that night because I didn't obey God. She said, Brother Collins, you had that interpretation, didn't you? Amen. I didn't think anybody knew. But Mother Gregory knew. Amen. I had that interpretation. The Spirit of God knew. Amen. I found out it was her son that was running the liquor store. And I talked to him about the Lord. He said, I don't want to be bothered. He said, I'll get saved and I get ready. I know how to get saved. I don't need anybody asking me uh, uh, to get saved. I get saved and I get ready. But in a few days, you'd have a head on collision. Wind up in the hospital, all broke up in a pitiful shape. Amen. I'll tell you what, folks. God can save us a whole lot of trouble if we'll give our lives to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Hatfield went back to a gentleman in the church there, uh, way in the back of the church, uh, and invited him to the altar. I stand on the rostrum watching her. She invited him to the altar. Amen. Marvin Barnett, I saw him shaking his head. I see him motion with his lips. I could see him talking to her and her talking to him. She told me on the way home I'd ride to church with Rob and Sister Rose in. She said, Marvin said, I've been saved four times. And I know how to get saved. 
and I'll get saved any time I want to. And he told her no. But Marvin didn't know. In just a few days, he'd get in a fight with his son-in-law over Marvin chastising his grandchild and his own daughter, amen, who was, <clears throat> I mean, uh, uh, she was something else. Uh, she challenged her husband, said, you going to let him talk to your child like that? And the son-in-law and the old man got in a fight and she agged it on. And the old man knew he wasn't any match for the younger man. And so he got out his knife and he was going to operate on that son-in-law good and proper. Amen. And that son-in-law picked up the first thing that he could grab. And it was a brick bat. That's a half a brick. And he let go of that old man with that brick bat and hit him in the head and knocked him clear out. And he stayed in a coma for a month or two. And we was praying for God to revive Marvin. Amen. And finally, after a month or two of laying in a coma, amen, in a hospital, Marvin opened his eyes. And when they began to talk to him, all he could say was, no. You could ask him if he felt good and he'd said no. Asked him if he felt bad and said no. No, no. And he'd tie up a whole bunch of no's. No, 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 no. And he'd try to talk and say words and he'd come out like a no, 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 no. You know what? The last words was to Sister Rosie that night uh, when she invited him to the altar. It was no. How would you like to get hung up uh, on no? I saw Marvin get hung up on the word no. And I went to visit him many a time. When he got able to come to church, they'd bring him up to the front and he'd get prayed for. You feel better, Marvin? No. No, 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 no. You feel worse? No, no. Marvin couldn't talk. I visited him at home as he got lower and lower. Amen. And anything you asked him, all he could say was, no. He died like that, folks. The only hope we had was that something broke through. But I want you to know you need to pray while you got your right mind. Amen. Be careful about saying no to the Holy Ghost. That's your open door. And when it closes, it'll be because you closed it. You know who closes the door most of the time? You do. Amen. Paul said... There's a great door of effectual open unto me, but there are many adversaries. Think of it. Amen. A door open, Mark Barker. A door open, Mike. Amen. Get over here, boys, and stand in the door, would you? Amen. Stand in the door, both of you. It'd be kind of hard to get by these boys, wouldn't it? If I wanted to get, keep you from going through the door. Amen. Here's an open door. Amen. And Paul inviting people through it. And the adversaries are standing there. Amen. Trying to keep people out. In order to get through that door, you've got to go through them. In order for Paul to reach through that door, he had to reach through them. Under any way he get through. Amen. And drag somebody through. He said there are many adversaries. That's Thank you, boys. Amen. <laughs> It'd be hard to get through if there's a lot of adversaries, wouldn't it? But uh, there some went through anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like us boys jumping across Big Creek. Amen. We found out if we took a long enough run and jumped hard enough there where the bank was cut away, we could jump 14 feet clear across the creek and land on the other side. The bank was that high. Amen. We had a slick path wore out where we'd take a run. Boy, I mean, we'd jump across that creek and land in the gravel bar on the other side. Amen. We learned to buckle at the knees, you know, and go down, you know, like a paratrooper. And, amen. And, and soften our landing and, and 
and we, was, we had a slick path wore out, but Jimmy Hatfield never got up nerve enough to try it until a bell for recess being up was about to ring. And Jimmy decided everybody else has done it, I'm going to do it too. So he backed up a way further than we did, further than we had the path, war slick. And I'd already jumped across, and I was waiting down below for him to come across. He is my buddy. I like Jimmy because he's the only boy in the country who had a bicycle. And I didn't have one. And so I could go to Jimmy's house and, amen. Jimmy didn't know I loved his bicycle better than I loved Jimmy. Amen. We was good friends because he had a bicycle. Amen. Jimmy came and he was just giving it this. I was waiting for him down on the ground below. He was getting close time to run, make a run for it down the creek. We were a half mile up the creek and we wasn't even supposed to be off school grounds. And we were making a big game out of jumping across that creek. He went a lot further back than we did and he took a lot longer to run. But when he got right to the edge, he backed out. But he'd gone too far. And his eyes popped out like saucers. I was waiting for him. And he fell off right in the middle of the creek. And he went back to school all wet. Teacher asked him, how come he fell in the creek? He said, well, so I hung my foot on a we, we talked it all over. And he said, tell the teacher you hung your foot on a root, root down there and fell in the creek. Amen. Because we could go that close to the creek run right by big creek school amen and a big bank there and uh, so we didn't tell her we'd been off school ground but jimmy if he'd just made any kind of a leap if he'd have just jumped he'd at least landed in shallow water but he landed in the deepest part on his hands and knees because he backed out amen listen the Bible said, he that put his hand to the plow and backs out, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. He that starts this battle and then quits in the middle of it, he's not fit for the kingdom. He's gonna, he that starts this building and stops not having enough to finish, everybody's going to laugh at him. Hey, he been you right for both worlds. If you don't go on with God. Amen. People of God that's bore the cross, they're going to say, he was a quitter. He couldn't make it. Amen. The world's going to laugh at you and say, well, he tried religion two or three times. He couldn't make it. And look at him. He's the meanest one of the bunch. Didn't do him any. They're going to laugh at you. If you fail, they're going to laugh at you from both sides. You're right for both worlds. If you go back on God, that's why people get so bad shape when they backslide in church. Some of them still going to church and they're doing things sinners wouldn't do. Amen. Church right here in town, people filling up one time, old time, holdest Pentecostal churches. Now they got them filled up with the world and the flesh and the devil doing things sinners wouldn't do. Justified it. Talking about grace. Amen. Oh yes, this is the time of our visitation. The door of grace is open. Amen. It has never been closed all my life. I was the only one that could close it on my part. And if I close it, somebody else will go through whether I do or not. Somebody else, if I fail God, there's two or three waiting in the wings to take my place. If I fail God, Amen. Oh, if I miss it, I'll regret it. It'll leave my soul as dark as night. And all the weeping and the wailing when the Spirit takes its flight. A closed door. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Said, Oh, Jerusalem, if thou hadst known in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they're hid from thine eyes. Amen. Praise God. A great door of effectual is open. Jesus is walking your streets. Can you imagine having God in the flesh walk in the streets of Jerusalem? But you know what? He wasn't welcome. And you know what? 
if Jesus walked the streets of Hamilton, Ohio today putting the doctors and the lawyers and the judges and the policemen out of business, he wouldn't be welcome. He'd say, when that low down bunch of, uh, uh, I'll not say what the word say, uh, world says sometimes, uh, amen, come to town, I had a job, but now I don't have no job. You know what? People would rather have money than have Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and Jerusalem would too. They said if we let him alone, the Romans will come and take away our place and nation. They didn't want him. Amen. But they didn't know the one was there that had the key of David in his hand. You talk about having the key of the city. He had the key of David in his hand. He opened and no man could shut. And he shut and no man could open. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, thou would stone us the prophets and kill us them which are sent in thee. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hadst known in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Amen. Move of the Spirit of God is a great opportunity to get something from God. And this is a great opportunity this morning to get something for the Lord. Take that long run. Make that flying leap. Amen. Dive through those adversaries. Get through any way you can. Amen. Walk. Crawl. Amen. I mean, anyway, get down on your hands and knees. Get down on your stomach and crawl if you have to. Amen. Do like Brother Curly Mayfield. Praise God. Still away up past 80. Still playing his tambourine in camp meeting. Praise God. Amen. When he got saved, he threw his hat into the altar and then chased it in there and fell the altar and got saved. Praise God. Amen. Come on. Go anyway. There's many adversaries and all kinds of voices, all kinds of peer pressure. All kinds of worldly slop. But come on anyway. As we pray, Father, touch my friends this morning. And every man, woman, boy, and girl, under the sound of my voice, save them today. I pray while the door is open, the door of grace and mercy for so long. Lord, save my friends, save the young folks, save dads and moms. Give them, Lord, the determination to live for God, no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Stand with us. Amen. Let's make our way to the altar and have a time of prayer. What an opportunity an altar call is. Everybody can come. Everybody can pray. Everybody can seek God. Let's do it. Amen. Let's do it with haste. Let's do it with expedition. Let's do it without delay. Amen. Don't let that door of mercy close on you. Time is swiftly passing. Life will soon be through. Is there a door closing oh, for someone? Mercy is there a door closing so hard you can hear the plaster fall? Mercy you hear a door closing on somebody? My God, the refuge of lies has failed Jesus him. And now the door is closing. Come, come, come. Come and live forever. Enter for you may. Don't let that door of mercy close on you. Don't let that door of mercy close on you. Don't let that door. If you want 
the mercy goes on you. Don't let that door of mercy close on you. Close on you. Don't let that door of mercy close on you.